Hey, what's up? This is Dustin the Grinch, and I'm sick of my Xbox OG giving me disk drive problems. This is no good. This is making me go nuts. I'm sick of this. So to fix this, you're going to need a Philips number two. You're going to need a five-star T20 and a T10, some dust-off Q-tips, and some lens cleaner. This is going to help you out through this. So I tried to prop the little nubs with my fingertips, but it did not work. So I have a little tiny Phillips screwdriver that I use, but like anything that's hard and little flat will work great for this. Just prop the nubs. Step two, I mean, I recommend using a drill if you're handy with one because it's faster, but if you're not handy with power tools, just use a hand tool because you don't want to risk stripping anything. And make sure you're using the right T20 because you don't want to try to MacGyver or something to try to fit and then strip it. Now, just buy the T20s. I bought some magnetic ones from eBay and the long shank. I'll put the link in the description. Okay, just make sure you got six screws out of the bottom before you ever try to pull the top piece off. Step three, remove the T10 screws from the CD DVD hard drive mount. There's just three screws in this assembly. And I can't wait to broadcast some broadcast some, some really good HD footage of some old games that we all love from Xbox that aren't compatible with any of the backwards compatibility updates. I, I'm going to show you in the next video. I'm going to try to get up tonight too if I can. If I'm a beast, we'll see if I can. So step four, set the HD, HDD enclosure to the side and move the IDD. ID cable from the DVD drive. Step 4. Set the HDD enclosure to the side and remove the ID cable from the DVD drive. Step 4. Set the HDD enclosure to the side and remove the ID cable from the DVD drive. Yeah, I see a lot of people doing more work. You don't need to do that. Step 5, remove the DVD-ROM drive and take the IDE cable out of the MOBO. Just be gentle. Try to grab the connector. I have really strong grips, so I just pulled it out with my hands. If you have uh, weaker hands, I guess you can use some pliers to pull it out. And don't knock the hard drive over. It's pretty fragile. I did that on purpose just to teach a lesson. Step 6, unplug the power from the DVD-ROM drive. This is a pretty easy cable. You can pry it left and right with your hand. Boom. All right, now step seven, clean the MOBO and check for blown capacitors. If blown, try to replace them. But if it's working fine with the blown ones, I guess you can leave it. But at least try to maybe clean up some of the goop with the Q-tip. If you have that, like I have a 2005 model, so it's actually working in great shape. No blown capacitors for me. Step eight, clean the drive, remove the enclosure by pulling the sides. There's no screws, so it's just held by mechanical retention. Just pull the little tabs on the side and it should come out really easy for you. Nothing should be forced with this installation at all. Everything should come out easy and fit easily back together. If you're forcing anything with this, you're doing something wrong. Step nine, use the number two Phillips to remove four screws from the DVD enclosure. Step 10, remove the DVD-ROM shell. This should come easy, just pry it left and right. If it gives you trouble, it should wiggle out, but don't force it too hard. There's just these little vertical clips in the side, so make sure they come out and it should be easy for you.
Then you pull out the top, just wiggle it left and right. Boom. Should come out easy. Now I have a 2005 model, so this is one of the last revisions that Microsoft did. It's actually one of the easiest to fix. There's a lot of plastic in the front that's really easy to locate, I'll tell you later. But step 11 is just clean the internals and polish the lens. And my lens was relatively clean. This was overkill, but hey, you know what? If it's going to read the disc easier, then it's going to help my laser last longer. So no matter what, clean your lens. And if you can, clean the center part if there's any dust. Step 12, poke the slot in front with the light blue plastic to release the disk drive. And it comes out real easy. Step 13, replace the rubber band, clean dust around any gears or moving parts. Now, I actually, if you see in this video, I pulled on the disk drive and tried to remove it, but it didn't come out easily. I'm sure there's a very easy tab to release it. But this is the lazy man's version with doing the least amount of work, and you don't even have to do that if you have a little pry. You just pop it in and pull it back, and it lands on the little wheels very easily. So if you want to, like, skip yourself a step, just don't even take out the tray. You can just pop in the rubber band if you're handy. And the reason why I did this and really cleaned it is so I could have as much grip as possible. Because if you have dust in the little wheels, then it's just going to reduce your grip. So I want everything very clean so we can grip this new rubber band. See how I tried to get that out? I'm sure there's a little tab that I pull on, but I didn't even want to waste my time because I said F it and I want it done right now. So I just popped in the rubber band and got it done. And if you're a collector out there and you're trying to get an Xbox for your collection, you don't know about Xboxes, try to get yourself a 2005 version because they just seem to work very good. The lasers don't go bad. If you replace it with a new rubber band every, you know, five to six years, you're gonna have an Xbox that's just a very long lasting Xbox. So try to get the last one. And if you have anything Foxconn, try to replace that because anything Foxconn tends to go bad. Step 14, put it all back together, babies. I was going to be all elaborate and do like a step up to, I don't even know, to put it back together, but I said F it. But Xbox is a great console. I kind of find this console to be the Dreamcast too. Like with games like Shenmue 2, Panzer Dragoon, Orta. Um, shoot, let me look back at my collection. Atogi 2, Outrun 2, you just have games from Sega that are very, very good. And it's just, there's so many games that can only be found on this system. I guess Steam has gotten a lot of the, um, the Vin Diesel games, the Chronicles, the Riddick games. But overall, I, I find the Xbox to be the best way to play any of that generation's games, unless you're playing on a PC, which isn't really fair. The PS2 is great. Too. I mean, it's however you can find the games, whatever controllers, however you prefer it. But I just find the graphics to be a little bit better on Xbox. And I'm so glad I, I bought the component to HDMI adapter. I'm going to start having a lot more footage now that I have my Xbox repaired. And I hope this video really helps everybody put their Xbox together. Because this was a tremendous outing from everybody on the Xbox team. Now just be careful how you put this all back together because there's a little white connector by the heat sinks and if you don't put everything back in right the back will not align with the xbox properly so if you ever notice any of the feet aren't going in easily just check you might be next to a connector and just wiggle it to the left and right or if you have to just stick your finger inside the xbox and push it away from that connector and it'll all fall into place because those little vertical black cylinders should all line into the screws for those T20 Torx screws to all line up perfectly. So there should be no forcing.
And make sure you put in the DVD-ROM drive first, because that's going to be a problem later on if you forget. Now, if you can in the comments, can you guys tell me any Xbox games that aren't backwards compatible with the 360 or Xbox One that you would love to see? Like, that would be tremendous. Please light it up in the comments with games that are tremendous to play only on the Xbox OG that aren't backwards compatible. That would be dope as hell, and I'd really appreciate that from the community. And I really want to do a giveaway. I'm looking into giving a Fire Emblem. Echoes. I'm looking into... I might have to keep it, though. I just got a dope-ass Crash Bandicoot. I might do an unboxing. It's the 7-inch Collector's Edition statue. I wanted to give that away. But I have a lot that I might want to give away. It's just I want to know what the dream items are from the community. And if it's the right item and I have it and I maybe have duplicates, I would love to give that away to the community. But I really want to help and I don't want to be selfish, but I do want to get views, you know, for giving away a bomb ass item. And I want to build something up. But there you go test this if you put it all back together this should be working fine let's get in the power supply let's hit that button it should be working first try boom it popped right out like OG that's how it's supposed to work my Xbox is blinking green and orange because I didn't plug in the AV cable so the Xbox is going hey I can't work without an AV cable so if you're wondering why it's blinking like that that's why it's blinking like that but this is a test just to see if the disk drive is actually ejecting and it finally is i'm so happy that i can finally show you guys some footage from all my original games yay it works i'm so happy let's turn it off thanks for watching guys like and subscribe it means so much to me i really appreciate the support thank you guys so much good luck have fun this dust in the grinch signing out peace my room is a mess